Hi, hello, welcome to another episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is July 22nd, 2023. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, doing pretty good. We've been having a very effective Saturday morning so far. I uh, woke up a tad later than I usually like to, but... I think the worst part was maybe I stayed up too late, but it was a good night, you know, so you know, I'm happy. I'm happy I started my weekend off well, in a way. Might maybe try to scooch in a little nap, but we'll see. See how the day goes. Uh, let's see here. Food Corner. So, I tried this uh, Benihana and a box meal, more or less. Uh, they were out of the P.F. Chang in the bag thing last week. So I picked this up. It was like a steak noodle dish. Uh, you were supposed to microwave. I was like, fuck that. I'm putting it on a skillet. And, excuse me. I will say that was kind of a mistake, kind of an L, because they didn't have, like, any of the, like, uh, bouillon cubes or anything like that, I guess you could say, in it to really kind of carry it. So they dry, the noodles were dry, pretty dry. That was kind of a bummer. Also, another bummer about it was the steak, as I was eating it, I kind of realized it was almost like very equivalent to the um, carne asada at uh, Taco Bell. So I was like, oh, that's that's fun. That's a fun taste. I remember this. I know this flavor. <laughs> so um, overall, though, it was fine. I actually added another protein to it, a little bit of a popcorn chicken. You know, I Americanized it even more so. But overall, it was good. I, 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 you know, it was meal. I ate it. I would eat it again. But it's not the go-to in the um, meal, frozen meal aisle. You feel me? But, you know, I'll take it. Let's see here. Today, went to Jupiter Donuts. And I got to say, it was cute, right? I go in there and they're doing like a Halloween theme. And I was like, okay, all right, I get it. Like, I've been looking at my timeline. People are, like, really, really hyped for Halloween. I kind of realize now, like, growing up, I remember, what was it? I think it was a Christmas in July or whatever. Essentially, like, people would start getting really hyped for Christmas halfway through the year. I remember that was, like, a really kind of big trend. And I've noticed, like, almost like a vibe shift, you know, changing of the times. And I feel like now Christmas is out and Halloween is like in, in a big way. So now people are like, yo, like once we are now like in July, it's time to start thinking about cozy vibes. It's time, it's time to start thinking about pumpkins. It's time to start getting Halloween pilled. And I'm okay with that. So I was like, all right, vibes dope. I get my donuts. I decided to add a brownie to it because I had brownies and I was like you know what give me a corner cut <laughs> why don't you just put that in a bag I got that I got a cinnamon twist it was supposed to be a glazed one but it was my bad because I said yeah just give me one of the twists and uh the person grabbed one and I was like cool dope I didn't even look at it for real I just said it and then I saw it. I was like okay well I mean I'll eat it it was good so it's worth I got a sticky bun which I actually still need to eat uh, let's see here. And then I got a, one of the, once again, the, the raspberry filled, um, like cream cheese ice thing kind of thing. But it was weird because they had, once again, the Halloween theme was, was a thing. They had like gummy worms coming out of like filled things. Um, they're making all this stuff spooky. But I looked at my, my, my thing and I'm like, what is it supposed to be? I'm not dogging the donut artist. I was like, is this a peace sign? I, I feel like maybe it could be a web, but this would be the worst web ever. I'm sorry. So I don't know. It was kind of a little bit splotchy, but you know what? It ate well. It ate great. And at the end of the day, that's, that's the true art. That's the art that I give a shit about the most. Okay. All right. Um, all right, I'm kind of going long here at the top. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, let's go ahead and get into some news. Why not? While you're here, from The Guardian, New Zealand shooting gunman kills two in Auckland hours, af oh, in hours, in Auckland hours before World Cup opening. Oh, really, really coming in hot. Two people have been killed and six injured after a shooting in Auckland City Center on Thursday morning, hours before the Women's World Cup kicked off there. So, hey, hey, sports coverage, woo, yeah, it's happening. Uh, but no, it's it's really just a, another shooting. <laughs> um, 
Chris Hipkins, who we've you know we've covered before, he's you know been the new guy, the new prime minister in town now. Uh, said the gunman was also dead, and there was no national security risk or increase to the national threat level. Visiting the scene on Thursday afternoon, he confirmed that the World Cup would go ahead as planned and people should feel safe to attend the matches. He said the shooting was a standalone incident, but added that the fans would see an enhanced police presence, uh, police presences in and around sports venues. Um, let's see here. I believe of the injured was actually one of the police in the crossfire. Um, but the gunman was Matu Tangi Matua Reed, who's 24 years old. He was working at the site and had a history of family violence. He was a subject of a home detention order, but had an exemption to work at the site. The New Zealand police commissioner, Andrew Coster, said. Also, um, New Zealand has strict gun laws. So it's pretty crazy that Reed was able to acquire a pump shotgun, you know, because he doesn't even have a license. It'd be hard to even get that. Um, but he found a way and sadly, you know, he took it out on the streets and used it. Um, I was just very unfortunate, but, um, I don't know. I, I do get though that the idea of like, look, you know, this is a big deal. We have this whole last world cup that's going to go, you know, hopefully without a hitch. So, so far so good, at least in that regard, but obviously, you know, you know, thoughts and condolences go out to the, you know, the victims, you know, the people injured in this situation. Um, you know, that just because someone's upset about something, that's that, that's not a reason to be like, oh, yeah, I got to take matters in my own hands and, like, take it to the streets. Like, that's wild as fucking hell. Um, but I guess while we're here, we'll do a little bit of sports coverage. Uh, New Zealand, the co-host, beat Norway in a 1-0 to zero upset. And then also, if I'm not mistaken, the United States beat Vietnam 3-0. to zero. So there you go. Sports news, sports casting, woo! Okay, <laughs> let's move along from Reuters. Turmoil in Thailand as rivals derail election winners' prime minister bid. So this is a bit of an update we covered back in May. Apparently, since the Move Forward Party won back in... Um, I believe, yeah, it was May 14th, maybe March 14th, I'm not sure. No, I think it was May. Um, but Pita Limjamarat, um, had won, but essentially the junta-backed Senate, like the military-backed Senate, said, okay, we get it. This guy's a mover shaker. This is like, you know, a very progressive party. That's very cute, but he's not gonna get the bid. We're gonna veto it. And essentially, they had the power to do that. And now that sparked debates. Uh, you know, Thailand's kind of been in a, you know, a, uh, what is it, standstill. That's what I'm looking for, um, you know, since. And it looks like, though, the move party is kind of saying, look, we're kind of out of options here. There's nothing we can do if the Senate is going to block him. Obviously, this doesn't make any sense. Millions of people voted for this party, voted for this candidate. And essentially, he's just being stymied because the powers that be say, you know what? No, 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 that's not going to work. He's not going to upset our status quo. No. And essentially, you guys have to find a new candidate if you, um, you know, want to actually use his power. And it's essentially, you know, put the move forward party in a bind. Uh, more or less from the perspective of this article, it's kind of like as they're trying to work it out. But essentially, they have kind of... Uh, you know, move to a you know, new candidate. They've kind of had no choice. I'll kind of address this real quick from this article. I'm also not going to really get into. We're riffing. Uh, Nikai, Asia. Thailand's move forward yields to Fu Thai candidate for prime minister. Now, this is a candidate I think that's hopefully going to be at least more okay to the military. Still a little bit closer to maybe like anti-establishment, but also potentially not really. I'm kind of just learning about these people. Um, but essentially, the Move Forward Party has said, look, this is our pick. But if he picks um, any like – if he invites two military-linked um, parties – then, which are the Palang Paracharath and the United Thai Nation, 
um, they'll leave the coalition. They'll essentially just forfeit the power that they've acquired because it's not worth it. Essentially, we are not going to do the people's will if we allow the military to kind of continue to be so entrenched in the government process. Uh, it's something I've talked about before. Like, it is one of those things I hate to see when a conservative government powers that be however it kind of happens it just winds up being thrown up to like a military power and it's like well this isn't this isn't anything close to a democracy at that point then it's some kind of like total totalitarianism or whatever you know what i mean like essentially it is a power controlling a group of people and that's sad that's not what that's never what i fucking want to see i don't think that's any effective fair form of government so hopefully you know, there's at least some kind of upside here, some kind of win here for the Move Forward Party. But that was an update I saw and I, I wanted to get to before week's end since it popped up to, you know, this week. All right, uh, let's go ahead and move along. Uh, we covered this as kind of a bit of a fallout from the Supreme Court rulings. Uh, it's, 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 it's annoying, infuriating. So, you know, let's just go ahead and get into it. Let's talk about it. Uh, from the Associated Press. Alabama lawmakers refused to create second majority black congressional con uh, <laughs> second majority black congressional district. So essentially, the Supreme Court and five four split. That was pretty like surprising. I remember saying like, okay, I guess this is a dub, but essentially they said, hey, like we're gonna let them do their thing, but we rule against this. They need to make a second, you know, majority district. So essentially, uh, Alabama on Friday refused to create a second majority black congressional district, a move that could defy a recent order from the United States Supreme Court to give minority voters a greater voice and trigger a renewed battle over the state's political map. Now, I think this was a very much a calculated risk. Uh, essentially, Republicans have the juice. That's why they were able to gerrymander their way to this point in the fucking first place. So essentially they said, you know what? Fine, 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 fine. You guys win. We'll carve it up some. And essentially what they did was they carved in a couple of more like black populated areas into a Republican district and said, hey, we bumped it up from 31 to 40%. So now they have more voting power here. There you go. We did it. And it's like, no, motherfucker. No one said that. Like, they literally said you need to make a new whole ass district. Like, it, it needs to be a different district so it can vote on its terms properly. And they're like, huh, you know what? We actually think this is close enough. I, I actually really want to read the quote because it just shows, like, just how petulant that they're being about this. If you... If you, hold on, if you think about where we were, the Supreme Court ruling was 5-4. So there's just one judge that needed to see something different. And I think that the movement that we have and what we've come to compromise on today gives us a good shot. And that was from House Speaker Nathaniel Ledbetter. Essentially, they're saying, like, we know we are probably in the wrong. Maybe we're in the wrong. But you know what? We at least have a shot to win again if this, when this gets bumped up to the Supreme Court again. So we think we're okay. And you know what's fucking annoying? You know the most frustrating thing? This motherfucker's probably right. Because it, this was like the Supreme Court, I've said this before, it's throwing a bone to, to people saying, hey, you know, we're actually a little bit more moderate than you think, okay? I know you keep calling us a super majority, but you know what? I actually can compromise. I'm Brett Kavanaugh, okay? And I'm Amy. Like, no, no. At the end of the day, these motherfuckers know exactly what they're doing. So I would not be surprised if they just shrug this off. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether they shrug it off or they don't because it is another session where the numbers are still not in favor of the people that it should be in favor for. And they just get to have their power. It's absolute. It doesn't matter. Um... It's very frustrating, and I feel like you'll see the same thing come the next time this, this conversation comes up. So it is a bummer to see this, that they can just blatantly just, you know, say, no, no thanks. This was supposed to be a win. This was supposed to be a fucking win. <laughs> they truly won't let us have shit. I, I swear to God. Um, but you love to see it. You love to, I love gerrymandering, man. Mm, I love it. It's such a fun topic because I, I, I just think it's one of those things where it's like, you just clearly see the game right there. It's just like, here's who's playing the game. And then you see, well, where's the blue? Well, pfft, 
that no one's really playing on the, our side. <laughs> you know, they just don't have the power. They don't have the juice. They don't got the squeeze. And you see it here. This is why no matter what the numbers look like when we all go to vote and do shit, it never fucking matters because they have the power where it counts locally and, and usually winds up at, at, a, at a federal level, you know, at a national level. It's whew, that social conservatorship, man. It really gets my goddamn goat. All right, all right, all right. I'm riffing. I'm ranting. I'm sorry. I'm finally gonna take my break. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let's let's decompress. <laughs> yes. Ooh wee. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Ooh wee. <laughs> From CBS News Miami, Miami woman eighteen arrested after allegedly trying to hire hitman to kill her three year old son. Police say. Now I know this is a sad ass story. It's really fucked up. Ha, it's morbid, but. I don't know, man. I, I always think it's a funny ass fucking goof em up when people think I'm gonna fucking hire a hitman. Like, y- your life is not a movie, dog. Like, if you were talking to a hitman, you are talking to someone who is going to arrest you. That is just pure and simple. And guess what? You better hope that that's the motherfucker you're talking to. Because guess what? If it's some bumbling ass fucking idiot that you think it fucking is, guess what? You're going to be in for worse trouble. It's only going to make a bigger mess and it's only going to make your life worse in the end when you get to go to fucking jail. Just trust me on this. Like I, I can't stress this enough. It's part of the reason why I bring up these stories a little bit. I don't know. But um, we're in Miami, bitch. Um, a Miami woman accused of trying to hire a hitman uh, this week to kill her three-year-old son has bonded out of jail, which is, I mean, wow, okay, yeah, out and about. Jasmine Perez of Miami is charged with first-degree solicitation of murder and third-degree using a communications device for an unlawful use, according to court documents. Uh, investigators said they were contacted on Tuesday by a man who operates a fake hire an assassin website to report that the woman had contacted the operator to arrange a murder for hire for the young wo- for the young child. According to police, the website founder created an online site to catch and curb those looking to hire a killer. Uh, we've covered this uh, this guy before, actually, at least a little bit indirect. Um, because I'm kind of fuzzy on the details, but people will go to the site and think like, yeah, I'm, I'm just on Killers R Us, and they will literally um, just throw their life away, more or less, um, and, and there's no motive as to why this woman did this, um, it's, I can't imagine I don't want to, uh, maybe if I find out, I might talk about it, but, I, you know, this is fucked up, man, I, I, I don't get it, uh, like, there's just so many ways, so many better ways to go about this. Is saying, "Oh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna give three thousand dollars for to a person to end my child's life." Um, I, I can't imagine the reason and thought process is beyond that, and I don't really want to waste getting brain capacity trying. So that that's it. That that's really all I got for today. Um, but if you'd like to help out and support the effort, I'd love that. Uh, Patreon.com for the news. Uh, gets you newsy status. I say your name on the podcast. It's a treat. And also, um, tag any project or any kind of, you know, thing you'd like. It's an option. It's on the table. Also, f- feedback area place. IsaiahNews1 at gmail.com. Also, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I got a burp, maybe? <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Uh, sorry for putting that in your ear hole. Uh, but on all the socials. Uh, feel free to hit me up. I, I, I thank you so much for like just listening. That's dope. Uh, any kind of like, hey, you know, I, I like what you're doing. That, that shit's dope. That that really makes my heart smile. I appreciate that shit so much. I don't know how to act when y'all do that. Like, oh my god, oh my god, thank you, thank you. Woo. Um, no, but um, thank you so much for that. Um, but uh, also we have YouTube. Always trying to pump that. Pump those numbers up. Feel free to subscribe. Subscribe on everything, because uh, that helps with Spotify, too. Uh, give me all the reviews. Give me comments. Hopefully positive. We love to see positive comments. 
uh, yeah, that's, uh, I think that's all I got. Yeah, that's it. That's the news. That's the news for the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for being a friend. And hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye. Mwah.